Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Stop, Drop, and It podcast. My name is Lisa. I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York, and it might be Christmas today. <laughs> if the editing goes well and I get this out on time on my usual Sunday, that would make it Christmas morning. So Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate. To everybody else, I hope that you are enjoying whatever holiday season you are in the midst of, if you are. Um, yeah, so let's see. This is episode 65, and I think this is going to be my last official podcast episode of 2022. That being said, I am hoping to have a few more videos coming out for you guys right around the end of the year and the very beginning of 2023, just depending on how the recording and editing schedule is done um, in a very small space when Owen is home from break <laughs> next week. So yeah, I'm hoping to have, um, I like to do my yearly and like roundup videos of everything that I knit for the year. So I'm hoping to record that in a few days, as well as my lingering whips and finish it or frog it video that I did last year. I really enjoyed doing that one last year. And so that gave me a lot of focus working through a whole bunch of my whips at the start of 2022. So I'm hoping to do something similar this year. But yeah, I think that we can just get right into it today. So let's talk about what I'm wearing. So today I am wearing my Garland Pullover. And this is a test knit that I did for Stephanie Lotvin last year. And I think it was kind of over the summer-ish when I got most of it done. So yeah, this one is, it's beautiful. It was not originally intended to be specifically a Christmas design, but um, it's very easy to make it that way. I'm gonna come a little closer so that you guys can see. Let's see, try to get the shadows off. So to make it more Christmassy, what I did was I turned the little berry parts into holly berries on all of the little garland strips. So this, um, this was a super fun sweater to knit. It, used I used for mine a combination of a very rustic wool um, this is actually an oatmeal color of Barrett wool company's home fingering that I had left over from a different sweater that I did for the minis I used a bunch of just mini skeins that I had in my stash from Knitterly Things I subscribed to her sock yarn clubs and I opt to have minis included and so I just I don't I don't buy minis, I just, the ones that I have come with the Sock Young Club, but I have so many that I was easily able to pull out, like just enough colors. And these are fun because they all have a little of the Stellina in them, so it's a little bit sparkly. So let me see if we can get this to focus in a little bit. I don't know, it's kind of the sun is already setting. I got a late start today, so I'm not sure how well that little shimmer can come through or not but yeah so um i got a lot of compliments on this sweater um i also added a little bit of detail at the cuffs i think that that was part of the pattern as well so maybe you can see the little bit of glitter in that and this is what it looks like it's about like i made it a very medium kind of classic length because I wanted this to be a sweater that would basically last the rest of my lifetime pending any severe changes in weight and all of that so that is my garland pullover and it's just perfect to wear I've already worn this so many times this month to various Christmas parties and church and little holiday gatherings so I'll probably wear this again on Christmas Day because I tend to like to be pretty relaxed on Christmas. So, so that's the Garland Pullover by Stephanie Lotvin. So I have a few finished objects to share with you all today. 
The first one I don't have with me because I gifted it already. So I'll have to insert some pictures here while I talk about it. But I think a lot of you, if you have been with me for some time, will remember a few months ago, I purchased some wool. I can actually, I can actually dig that out um, because I have some left over. So I can show you the wool because I actually purchased quite a bit of it because I wasn't able to get this as a kit. This is all wool from Barrett Wool Co. So she just makes just such soft, beautiful, beautiful yarn. And it is 100% wool, I think from sheep, like American sheep. And it's, I think it's merino, like what does it say? You get very generous yardage. It's her home worsted weight. It just says 100% American wool. And there's 230 yards. And yeah, that's all the information it gives. But, so I purchased this yarn in these specific colors because I wanted to make a gift for my boss's daughter was born, he had a pandemic baby. And because we were all working remotely, I had no idea that he had even had a kid until we went back in person. And she was at that point about 18 months old. So she just turned two years old earlier this month. And so I finally knit her Susan B. Anderson's mother hen pattern. And this thing is the cutest ever. It is this adorable hen. So I've got some pictures um, of the hen undressed. And then, so it's like, it's kind of like a medium size. It's about like, like this big. And then there's a little hat that has ear flaps and a pom-pom, a little cardigan. And in the pockets of the cardigan, there's a little tiny baby chick and a little tiny egg. So when I saw that pattern, I said, okay, this would be so cute for a kid, for a kid's gift for like a little kid, because they can, you know, have fun taking the sweater on and off the hen and then they've, there's like the little baby chick and the egg that are like just fit in their little tiny hands so easily so I just thought that that would be so cute so I gifted it on Friday so I finished it completely Thursday night today is Wednesday the following Wednesday so I gifted it about five days ago and I didn't get any pictures in like really great lighting or anything, but it was the only opportunity I had before everybody was going away for the holidays. So I wanted to make sure that he got it. And from what I hear, his daughter likes it. I got a message from his wife who also works at the school and said that Haley really likes the hen a lot. So he was a little bit worried. He said sometimes like she can be scared of things when they're like brand new. So yeah, so I don't know like how she reacted and hopefully I'll get a picture at some point of little Haley with the mother hen. But yeah, so that was a really fun pattern to knit. It also took up quite a bit of my knitting time these past couple of weeks. I was really not completely monogamous with that, but because I kind of had a deadline for that one and when, when I wanted to have it done and gifted by, that was the project that got the most attention. And there was just a lot of steps to it because you, first you had to knit the whole entire hen, which had a bunch of different parts. And stuffed animals, they're not difficult to knit, but they have a lot of like little finicky bits where you're like putting things on waste yarn and holding stitches for later and things like that. So even though it wasn't a complicated knit, it was a little bit time consuming with all of the different steps to make it. And then I also had to make the hat and the sweater and I actually had to block the hat and the sweater, which I did. I just soaked it in a little bit of eucalyptus and let it dry. They were so small, so they just dried really quickly overnight. Um, and then I had to still knit the little baby chick and the little egg, which both went very quickly. But yeah, so there was, there was a lot of different steps to it. Um, I think Owen is fully expecting me to make him one at some point. I don't have the motivation to make another hen right at this moment. So 
probably be a little while before I feel like picking that up again because I have other things that I'm knitting, which I will tell you about later. My second finished object, I just bound off a couple minutes before I picked Owen up from the bus today. So half an hour ago, I think I bound it off officially. So it still has to be blocked and it still has to have the ends woven in. So it's not like finished, 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 ready to wear finished, but the knitting is completely done. And that is my Easy V pullover. I'm so excited about this one. This one has been really close the last couple weeks, but I spent so much time working on that hen that I actually only just got it done. So I wonder if I should throw it on for a quick second and do a fit check. Should we do a fit check? I think that could be fun. So, all right, let me pause the camera, do a little outfit swap, and we'll be right back. Guys, I love it. Oh my goodness. So this is the first time I'm officially putting it on. The, the yoke, I did a steam blocking before I separated for the sleeves because in the pattern Caitlin Hunter recommend, by the way, this is by Caitlin Hunter. I don't think I said that a minute ago. This is the Easy V sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Networks. So she recommends after knitting the yoke, um, let me stand up a little bit. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I like it so much. I don't really have enough room to show it off properly um, but I think that the fit is really nice and you gotta understand this also is not blocked yet so like this is gonna relax and be like nice and slouchy just like I wanted it to be so yeah she said to before splitting for the sleeves block the yoke and do a fit check so I had done that but I have not put it on since so the only thing that's blocked is the top of it up to here. And I just did a steam block. And then the rest of this has not been blocked at all. So these stitches are going to even out very nicely. Get a little, oh, I've got shadows everywhere today because of the not having the natural light in here <laughs> today. Um, yeah, so sorry about the shadows, but this, and then the sleeves. I don't even know which sleeve I did first and which one I just bound off. Um, no idea. <laughs> I wanna say, yeah, no, I have no idea which, which sleeve was done and which I wasn't working on lately. But yeah, I, I had second sleeve syndrome. I remember last time I podcast about this sweater, I was really thinking I was gonna have it done within like the next two or three days. And then I must have gotten started knitting on that hen and I just didn't pick it up. And I don't know, like as soon as you get to the color work part of the sleeve, it goes so fast. But just this little bit of stock in it, I just didn't wanna. <laughs> it just, I was like, eh, I just don't wanna. I just wanna be at the color work part. But of course, in order to like get to the color work part, you've gotta first do the I don't wanna part. So. Yeah, so I finished up all the color work over the last two nights, and then this this afternoon, I finished the cuff. I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough yarn, let me grab it, left over for the main color, but thankfully, thankfully, I still actually have this much, so I did realize at a point that I was going to have more than enough to finish the sweater, but I didn't know that until I got to the color work and was able to see exactly how much I had left. So once I got to that point, I wasn't worried. But before that, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to have to play yarn chicken with this? And so this green color, this is Quince & Co. Lark, and this was D-Stash that I had gotten from somebody a few years ago. So it's not recent. I don't know if like Quince & Co still makes this, this colorway or not. Um, so I had already kind of started scouting it out on Ravelry to see what my options might be. And it looked like I was gonna have one or two options to maybe get that last little bit if it was gonna be necessary. But thankfully I didn't need to worry about it because I just, I had enough. 
Um, so that was what I used for my main color. So it feels really good to like hardly have any of this left in my stash. And then I still have a really good amount of the worsted weight. This is my naturally dyed yarn in goldenrod and avocado. And I wanted to show you also how much hand spun I had left is also a pretty good amount. So the hand spun, I have been holding double for this project because it's just, it's much, much thinner than a worsted weight yarn. So that was everything I used and now it's ready to just be blocked, which I don't know, things in here are very tight. It's a very small apartment and with Christmas um, and everything, I'll probably won't get around to blocking it until after Christmas is done because I just don't don't really have a place to lay it all out with everything right now so this might just have to wait but hopefully it'll be blocked and I can wear it in my next podcast episode or my next video not sure which um, yeah so this is easy V by Caitlin Hunter and so even though I blocked this I'm imagining that like when I wet block it I can pin it exactly you know like this rib is really is really stretchy and so I know that some people like it to sit higher I was kind of wanting it to be more of a slouchy fall off the shoulder kind of look but there's yeah there's so much room and I really really like it so yay it's finally done um okay I have one more finished object but we're gonna go ahead and slide into knitworthy because my next finished object fits within my knitworthy category I'm really glad that I finished these and had a chance to record this segment before Owen sees because he's gonna steal these immediately from me I finally finished his socks so I gifted Owen this sock for his birthday. <laughs> I am the queen of gifting single socks and still having the other one to go. But Owen was a champ. He didn't get upset or anything. He actually laughed and he immediately put it on his foot and it stayed there for like the next 36 hours, not 36 hours, like day and a half. Yeah, maybe 36 hours. I don't know. Maybe at least 24 hours it was on his foot. I had to pry this thing off his foot. I wanted to make sure to get it back and that he didn't lose it so that I could see exactly the stripes because unlike usual, I actually matched these. Um, if you see, so I used, oh my gosh, I've got my hair knitted in to the sock so gross guys does that happen to you too all right so i did the contrasting color with a mini skein for the cuff and the heel which i just did a traditional like slip stitch gusset heel and the toe and so when i started with the main color i just started wherever the skein was and it gave me half of this like brownish purplish stripe right there and when I ended it gave me also I got half of a stripe of that same color before it was time for me to do the toe so I knew that because I was going to be starting in the same point that these were going to end up being matching which doesn't usually happen I usually just like let the stripes do whatever they want but in this case they are identical and I'm gonna sneeze so yeah so we actually have matchy matchy socks so I can now officially gift Owen his birthday socks so the yarn I used aren't these colors spectacular this is knitterly things yarn and I really really love these colors the color is that fall feeling and I want to say it's from 2020 maybe let me see so it's from her Vesper, Vesper Twisted Sock Yarn. So the Twisted Base, this is actually the first time I've knit with it. 
but it's 100% superwash merino and it looks like there's no nylon in this at all. But I don't know if there's nylon in this one or not. This also looks to be that same twisted base. So these might not have any nylon in them, which we'll see how that goes for Owen. I've never knit him socks that didn't have any nylon. But if you see um, this yarn here, you see how there's some stripey stripes, like the barber pole striping there. And I've received several on this base from Julia throughout the years, but this is the first time I've actually knit with it. So I was wondering like how this was gonna knit up. And it turns out that those speckly sections just kind of very subtly stripe. Almost like speckles, but not speckles, more like really thin, really thin stripes. But it gives this kind of like, I don't know if I want to say like a grungy look to it, but it just, it adds some depth that I think is really, really nice. So the color is that fall feeling and it's from, what was it, September 2020? Yeah, September 2020. And then the mini, I have no idea what color the mini was, but I just, I love them together. So that is the first pair of socks I have finished in quite a long time, actually. So I'm excited to give these to Owen. I'll probably just give him both of the socks now. I could give him the other one for Christmas, but eh, I think I'll probably just be like, here you go. And yeah and then he can just wear them so they're so cute i usually am able to get socks for both of us out of a single skein of julia's yarn i don't know though because now his feet are growing because he's eight now and he's kind of into big kid territory oh actually so this is how much i have left which is why i was holding it up so i don't know if i'll be able to get two like full-size socks out of these unless I add in like a third color for some of the contrasting heels and toes and stuff. I think what I might do is split it into separate skeins like by weighing it out on my kitchen scale and kind of seeing how much I have to knit like with for each sock because I think I would want to make sure that both of the socks are using the striped yarn in like an equal amount and not like one sock has a lot of it and then the other is just it runs out you know um i forgot to tell you what pattern i used so this is the half pint sock pattern and i'll have the designer on the screen here also in the project notes in the description below the video and because i don't remember the designer but there's two sizes and I used to always knit him the smaller of the two sizes. These are kids socks. So it's, it's meant for kids size feet. So there's the smaller size, which has like a 44 stitch cast on. And then I, I knit the bigger size, which has a 52, yeah, 52 stitch cast on. And when I knit socks for myself, I have really narrow feet. So I, usually 60 is usually actually a little too loose for me unless i'm knitting on like size zero needles so i usually go down to like 56 stitches for myself so these actually fit on my feet no problem it's just that the foot is like just a little bit short for me I could get away with wearing these though, but the heel just wasn't, wouldn't be quite in the right place. We are not that far away from swapping who has the bigger and smaller feet. And pretty soon here, we're gonna just be able to share socks, which I don't know how I feel about that. He's eight, <laughs> that's just crazy to me. But yeah, so that is my last finished, finished object today. Um, I have one more project to share with you in Knitworthy here. I'm going to have to take a little bit of a break. I actually have to teach my very last flute lesson of the year right now. Um, she was supposed to have a lesson yesterday, but she had a school concert, so we had to do a little 
rescheduling. So I'm gonna take a break for an hour, teach that lesson, and then I will be back to share the whole rest of the podcast with you guys. I'm back. I am officially done teaching flute lessons for the year. That feels so good. Oh my gosh. All right, so we are, I still, I think we are still in Knitworthy, and I was about to show you what I started working on for Bryce for Christmas. It's not gonna look like much yet because I only just got started with it, and honestly, it looks nothing like what it's just supposed to look like. This is what I've got. You guys have any idea what this is? Because right now, it looks like a potato <laughs> or something. Like, I don't know, it kind of looks, kind of looks like a hot potato, <laughs> like, but it is going to be, I'll show you the picture of the tag. It's gonna be a moose. So we have a thing with moose and over the summer, well, for, for years now, we've been spending um, we've, we've spent maybe four vacations in Vermont over the years, and we went back to Vermont over the summer, and we actually drove up to New Hampshire because that was where we had more luck finding a moose, but we went on this mission to find a moose, and we were successful, thank goodness, but that was this past summer, and I've actually had this moose kit for a few years, maybe two years now, and I've been meaning to make it specifically for my husband. And so this is officially going to be his Christmas gift, um, like his hand knit Christmas gift from me. So I got the kit a few years ago. It's a Barrett Wilco kit and it's that little moose. And it comes with, I'll show you the yarn. So obviously, <laughs> so I've done, I've done the body and I've done the head it looks really weird though because so there's waist yarn here and so where it looks like he's got a mouth right now that's going to be the the nose placement for like the big snout snout part and then she's really clever the way that she does the placement for like the arms or where these pearl bumps are here and then this is like the placement for the ears and then I guess the antlers will be like up and about and the leg placement are those pearl bumps on either side down there. So I love how she works the exact placement of all of the limbs and things with the pearl bumps because it makes it so easy. There's no figuring out what to do. So um, it's with her home worsted. And so this is the antler color and this is also the base color for the sweater I think and then the other color for the sweater is this gorgeous green so and then that'll have the the pine trees on it there is actually another outfit that I do not have that she has released for the moose I don't have the yarn for it at least not like specifically with this kit but it's a cute like little winter sweater. I think it's it's either gray and red or white and red. So I might be able to use some leftovers from um, the hen to make this sweater. Um, but that probably wouldn't happen before Christmas. But it's really cute. I'll insert pictures. So we've got the moose with the sweater that I'm knitting with the pine trees on it. And then the other outfit has, like, has some red in it and it, it might have a hood. I'm not sure, I can't remember. But it's got like a little cardinal in the pocket, which I love how she does like the little things in the pockets. So cute. And so then I have this, um, I don't remember if this is her black or like her peppercorn or just like a really dark gray, but that's for the hooves of the moose. So yeah, so I've got all of these colors for the moose and then these two colors for the sweater. And so I am also going to look in the store and see if I can find some moose munch. So I feel like, um, I don't know that I'm gonna have time to go to the outlets. We have a Harry and David at the outlets and I definitely don't have time because let's see, today is the 21st. So I definitely don't have time to order online, but I definitely wanna also get him some moose munch to go along with this gift. So. 
yeah so that's what I'm making for Bryce for his hand knit Christmas gift I still have socks on the needles for him but I honestly haven't touched them so um, those are just his birthday socks that are definitely not gonna get done this year probably those will go over into January because big feet he's got very very big like size 12 big man feet so yeah so the moose I'm very excited about the moose I have been getting these kits for so long and I'm so glad that I'm finally actually knitting them up because they're so cute and they're so fun and they make really great gifts and they're really fun to knit um, you can either buy the kits or you can also buy um, just the patterns are available so you can use whatever yarn you want and you could even like change needle sizes and use like fingering weight if you wanted to have like a much smaller version that would be really cute too so yeah so you can just get the pattern if you don't want to invest in a whole kit her kits go in and out of stock i think the moose i think is available right now still as of the last time i looked which was a few days ago so there might be a chance that you can snag the moose because that was one of her more popular kits and i know that she was trying to keep the most popular ones in stock for people so so yeah um i have i'm not going to go into whips today obviously what i just showed you is a whip but i am going to go into cast ons because i have a fresh cast on so that's kind of a whip but it's one i've never shared before so all of the whips that I, like i haven't touched them if i if i'm not showing it today i just haven't touched it these last couple weeks but i'll be sharing all of those in my next video um one of my next videos like my lingering whips video so we'll we'll talk about all of those in an upcoming video soon just not today today we're gonna move right on into new cast-ons so i did the thing that a year ago i said i was gonna stop doing and i signed up for a test knit <laughs> so i have done a swatch for Katherine Clark's latest design good day sunshine so Katherine Clark is the owner of Brooklyn General which is an amazing yarn shop here in Brooklyn New York not really here I don't live in Brooklyn but it's like an hour and a half from me um, so pretty local but not like not like local like I've only been to it one time <laughs> local so um, I, I order from them all the time but um, when she put out this design I just thought it was so cute and so happy and I just got inspired and I really wanted to make it um, and I said okay I will do the test knit because I'm about to have a few weeks off from work and the only other thing I'm really going to be focusing on is getting the rest of my shop set up. I'm like kind of a third of the way there. So that is going to be happening. But also this is going to be happening. I knit a swatch mostly because it was the only thing we had for a couple of weeks and I wanted to get started using my yarn. It is so happy and cheery. Um, so the stripes in the background are not showing a lot of contrast here and by contrast I mean um, it's it kind of is gonna look a little bit like a sunset the the stripes the contrasting color is with this beautiful it's spin cycle and I'm gonna have to get the name of the color what is the color called um, lunar retreat which is very Catherine. She is she is very into like moon cycles and things like that. Um, so these are like the colors that are in this spin cycle. So this is dyed in the wool, which is their sport fingering base. Um, but in my swatch, it I was just kind of stuck in the blue section. So it, which is fine with me because I'd rather have the pinks and purples in the actual sweater. And then the other um, two yarns are both Farmer's Daughter fibers, so copy. So these are the two colors, and it's a, a single, it's a singles yarn, and I believe it is 
100% Rambouillet wool. So let me just get the label of this out. Um, so this color is Sunny's, which is really fitting because it's for all of the suns. Yeah, it's 100% Montana and Wyoming Rambouillet. Rambouillet. So, and so copy. So this is, um, that is the label for the so copy. And then that is her, like, brand label, Farmer's Daughter Fibers. So it's the color Sunny. And the blue color is, let me see, because I just don't remember the name of it. It is Union Street State of Mind. <laughs> so, yeah, so those are the colors. I went ahead and I purchased the kit from Catherine. She put together kits for her test knit. So I went, uh, uh, I went ahead and just bought the kit to do it because I remember last time I did her test knit, it was for the Noctuidae sweater, which was the one with all the moths on it. And I think I used the spin cycle and I used the tuku wool that she called for, but the main color actually was this that I used, the Sparrow Wool Co. And I don't know if one of them, like this one might be woolen spun. It, there was something about mixing this in with the other ones that she had chosen that the color work just didn't fully pop as much as I wanted to. So I decided to just go ahead and get the same exact yarn in the same exact colors as she used for her design. Cause I also really fell in love with the way that it looked. So um, I just wanted to stick to the original colors. So this is what I'm going to be working on. This is my swatch. And what I did was I just, I knit it in the round. I wonder if this will fit. It's probably gonna be big here. If I don't need to take it apart, I might be able to just use it as like a little bottle cozy. Yeah, that would work on like a water bottle or something. So I don't know. I don't often actually make a swatch, but I went ahead and did it in the round. So it took quite a while actually to knit. Um, you know, it's two colors of color work. So there's, I don't think there's any three color rows. I don't think. And if there are, it's just once in a blue moon. So um, so I did the swatch and then the only other thing that I have done was I did the beginning of the collar cast on. So I'm trying to like hide my face so that we can focus in on that. So it's going really, really well so far. Not really much to show, um, but yeah, so that, is going to be I don't even know what kind of collar it is it's kind of I want to say it's like a half mock neck maybe um, I'll put a picture of the some of the progress that she has shown on social media I am allowed to talk about it on the podcast I know sometimes when you do a test knit the designers are really hush hush about it but I think you know in Catherine's case her designs are always so intricate with such specific color work designs that nobody's gonna steal it from her. It's they're very Catherine Clark and they're very unique to her. So I don't think that she's at all worried about people copying her work. So yeah, so there's like so many test knitters. There are so many different sizes for this sweater. I can tell it's gonna be really size inclusive. Usually I knit a size three or a size four for a sweater, I am test knitting a size six because it goes so much smaller. Like I think the smallest is around 28 bust. So yeah, so I'm just, I'm automatically about two sizes, two to three sizes higher than what my normal size range is for the same measurement. So like she's she's got really well on the lower end of the size and of course she's got you know I don't know I don't remember how high it goes but I mean there's like a million different sizes so it's very inclusive from what I can tell I think that this is due beginning to mid-February so I've got a good amount of time to work on it 
So I'll be sharing this every week because this is going to be like my continuous project because it is a test knit. So it'll be like the one constant project that is always going so that I am making progress toward completing it. So that is everything I've got for casting on and let's move into spinning. So for spinning today, I don't have any actual spinning to show you, but I do have an exciting announcement that I wanted to share in my podcast in case you don't watch my Paradise Fibers unboxing videos and haven't seen my Instagram, then you might not know that I am officially now an affiliate for Paradise Fibers. So starting with this beautiful package, now I have an affiliate link. So um, I was a little bit confused at first, like what does that mean? Are they gonna be sending me the packages or do I just get a link to share with everybody and a commission? And so it's actually the latter right now. I think that um, they do send the package free of charge to some people who I guess have shown that they have enough of, um, not a following, but, um, they have a history, they've built up a history of referring people to purchase from them. So now they get gifted the bag. Even though I have been making videos for two full years now, because I haven't had an affiliate link to share, there's no way for them to track like how much traffic I'm driving their way. So hopefully after a few months, maybe I'll get it gifted to me. But for now, what I get is an affiliate link and um, just I'm purchasing it just the same as I always have actually my husband buys this for me because it was his Christmas present to me that he started two years ago and I've enjoyed the subscription so much that I have just continued it so I wanted to though even I don't have spinning to share with you but this was such a good month and um, I am gonna have an unboxing video that should be out by the time you're watching this but um, this fiber is so beautiful that I wanted to go ahead and share it with you. So the inspiration was Van Gogh's Starry Night and the main fiber, look at how gorgeous this is. It is so beautiful. It's 75% merino and 25% bamboo actually. So we've got eight ounces of this fiber plus they gave us some really super sparkly Stellina to mix in with it if we want to. So there's this, I think this is the Wisteria colorway. It is so shiny. And then the other colorway, I wanna say is like Cobalt maybe. Um, if you wanna see more details on any of this, go ahead and watch my unboxing video. Look at how shiny those are. It's unbelievable. And then this is what these look like all together. Get my head out of there. So I am really excited to spin this fiber up. It's gonna be glorious and so pretty. So yeah, so now um, I'll go ahead and I'll put it, I'll put my affiliate link in all of my videos, um, starting with this one. I do have it, I have already, uh, added the link into all of the previous unboxing videos that I have done for Paradise Fibers with a note saying, because I always used to say I'm not an affiliate, this is just, I'm just sharing this because that's what I like to do. Um, so for everything previous to when I actually am an affiliate now, I have put a disclaimer in there that, you know, as of December 2022, I'm affiliate. So yeah, if you guys ever want to purchase anything from Paradise Fibers, they don't just have fiber, they carry yarn too, and they carry tools and spinning wheels and blending boards and you know, all kinds of things over there. So if there's ever anything that you wanna purchase from Paradise Fibers, I hope that you'll consider purchasing through my link. It won't cost you anything extra, but I will get a small commission from it. And that's just really helpful and um, especially I do all of these videos just because I really enjoy it. So it's just a way that you guys can support me and 
yeah, show that you appreciate me showing you all of these things that I purchase and share the love with me. So yay, I'm very excited about that. Um, so that's kind of my first acquisition. I'm officially going to move into my regular acquisition section now and show you the last couple things that I have. So this episode I have two different acquisitions to share with you guys. Um, the first is my Knitterly Things Sock Club subscription. So this is from November 2022. Um, her regular, I get two different subscriptions. Her regular sock yarn subscription is the Vesper Sock Club and you can sign up for this one, I believe actually very soon. Um, probably before the end of December here. It will be coming up, I think. Um, and you sign up for like three months at a time, or you can go ahead and sign up for all 12 months. And the other one that I have is her Remix Club, which you can only sign up for at the start of the year. So be on the lookout for that if you've been wanting to try her Remix Club, because that subscription only opens for to begin in January. So I don't know if it's going to be the end of December or just right at the start of January that she'll open it, but just be on the lookout for that. Um, so these are the colors that I received for November. So I think this time they're a little on the girlier side. Last month was pretty uh, gender neutral, I think. But these have, you know, a little bit more pinks to them. This one is called Wildish. This is her regular Vesper Sock Yarn Club. And so it's kind of like a hot pink, a peach, like a dark leafy green, the, and a brown, like a chocolate brown. And then there's this uh, lighter green, lighter leaf green that comes with it as a mini. This is on her Glitterful base. You can also decide if you want a specific base or if you just want to let her choose for you. That's what I do. I just do Dyer's Choice, so I have no preference. I have a nice mix of all of her different bases. But this glittery one is 75% Superwash Merino, 23% Nylon, and 2% Stellina Sparkle, and there is 463 yarn, yards yarns <laughs> yards of that and then the remix club also has lots of pinks and purples in it this one's called verbena remix and so these are all of those colors also like a hot pink magenta a carnation pink a deep purple a deep green and looks like a little bit of gray and a little bit of white in there and then I don't know how I feel about this mini color with these colors. I don't, it's kind of a pinkish, peachish. I don't know if I would use these together or not, but if I don't want to use them, then I just use them on their own. And sometimes I'll just pull the minis for a different project entirely, like I did for the color work in the sweater. So that's my acquisition from Knitterly Things. I have so much Knitterly Things yarn. I think I've been subscribing for like four years now or something. Um, and then I will edit out the crinkling, but I didn't actually open this yet. I got a package from Barrett Woolco. And so I'll share these. So actually I ordered two kits of the same exact design. So she has a fawn kit, which is like, the cutest little baby deer in overalls. And I got two because I couldn't decide what color. And I feel like I wanted to keep one for myself and that Owen was going to want one. So I chose, um, I'll open this up so that you guys can see the colors. And I'll put pictures like I always do. Oh yeah, and I also got the buttons. So it comes with buttons for the overalls so she only includes exactly what you need for the pattern so that's why she cut off like two and two there and um there's so this comes with some felt to do the spots and some of the details of the face and then these are the yarn colors 
for the fawn with the pink overalls. And this is, I think it's a mix of her worsted and this one I think is not the worsted. I think that's a different base entirely. Um, I'd have to look at the exact information, but super cute. And then I'll show you the colors for the other one and I'll include pictures. Um, it's just, I missed out on this kit the first time she released it. So when she re-released it, I just, I had to get it again. So these are the other set of colors, which is more festive for Christmas. So I just thought it would be really sweet. So it's basically the deer, baby deer with the green overalls or the baby deer with the pink overalls. But so I am actually knitting up her kits now. I have a nice collection of lots of different kits that she has put out. Some of them I make for us here at home for decorations and then others I make as gifts for little kids and they're just the sweetest. They always bring a smile to, to everybody's face no matter if it's like they're just admiring it and I have it on my shelf or if it's a gift for a kid. Like everybody thinks they're just the sweetest little things. So she's just so talented, Susan B. Anderson, at her toy designs. It's unbelievable. So that is it for acquisitions. So that's everything that I have to share with you all today for episode 65 and my last official podcast, like regularly structured podcast episode of 2022. Oh my goodness. I know that this year I was not as consistent as I would have liked to be podcasting. There were just so many things that were changing this year. The biggest one was our move out of my parents' house, their move down south, and us in a little tiny apartment here for now. So there will be another move happening um, at some point in the future because we are not in our forever place by any means. But, you know, there's been a lot of things to adjust to. My I started a new full-time position at my college at the start of this year. Bryce started a full-time position in July. So there's just been so much change happening, all exciting and all wonderful things. But with all of that change, schedules get crazy. We live an hour away from where we work, so there's a lot of extra commuting time. And, you know, just, just things. And Owen's theater and driving him to everything. Um, yeah, so it's it's just been a little bit of an adjustment to kind of find a rhythm and I don't really think I have found a rhythm yet with the frequency of which I would like to podcast so hopefully I can get things going a little bit more regularly at least do two a month if not go back to every week we will see how it goes in 2023 but I just wanted to end this episode by thanking all of you for sticking with me throughout all of the crazy this year for subscribing, for liking and commenting on my videos. It all means so much to me. And I'm pretty sure that when you're watching this, it is Christmas. So Merry Christmas to all of you who celebrate. And I wish everybody um, a happy end of 2022. I know it's really cold right now. We're like about to hit some record low temperatures. So stay warm, stay safe, and I will see you guys all in 2023. Bye-bye.